A university student at the Faculty of Sports Science was tasked with an experiment on a supposedly unoffensive supplement. This is what happened to her kidneys. Arby is a fourth year student of sports science at a prestigious university. Her body is her temple. But today, she is being admitted to an intensive care unit to receive emergency dialysis. Arby spent every day of the last four years learning the ways the human body can perform at the top even under the most difficult conditions, which makes her both an athlete and an aspiring researcher. But in March 2015, the task she was given was too much even for her. Arby was told that fateful morning to take a supposedly safe supplement for an experiment. A student mixed a white powder in a shaker with orange juice and gave it to Arby. Little did she know that by drinking that juice, she would end up in dialysis after suffering a heart attack. After drinking the whole shaker, she started her workout. The idea was to measure what kind of performance boost the supplement was able to give her compared with no supplement at all. And that's a pretty standard experiment for a sports science university. However, something went terribly wrong that day. After some minutes on the treadmill, Arby started feeling her stomach burning and her well-trained heart started to beat faster and faster at a scary pace. Is there something wrong with my heart? She thought. But she didn't say anything. She was worried she was going to ruin the experiment. However, soon after that, she started hyperventilating. Hey Arby, is everything all right? asked the student that was supposed to supervise her. But no, everything was not all right for Arby. She had to halt the experiment abruptly because she had to rush to the toilet to throw up. She was feeling a pain in her chest that was too much to bear. That's when the other student called for 911. Gathering here, today we will see how a university was fined $500,000 in 2015 after one of its students was left fighting for her life following a batch science experiment. Everything you will see here today is based on a real story and while the names of the protagonists and the places have been hidden, I have not altered any of the relevant medical facts. This really happened. And there is a key lesson to learn from the misadventure of the student that ended up doing emergency dialysis. You see, many of the supplements we may take every day are not as safe as we think. We should always exercise the maximum caution, especially when taking something for the first time. And I don't want to scare you, so I will tell you immediately that Arby was mistakenly given a way higher dose than she should have been. But if a sports science university student made this mistake, it can happen to everyone because the substance she had to take for that tragic science experiment is one of the most commonly used today. A substance that almost everyone takes regularly, either from food or from supplements. Yes, in today's video, I want to point out a huge flaw in supplement regulation that is still putting lives in danger today. Because, as I've said in many of my videos, many substances that are considered safe can be extremely dangerous when the dose is not right. RB is in the emergency room now. Her parents and her friends all came to the hospital right after hearing what happened and they are told to sit in the waiting room. Arby is alone now and her body is shaking violently. The doctors are trying to understand how could the heart of a sports science student beat so fast after just a few minutes on the treadmill. As the medical team reads the results of Arby's blood test, they find that she has hypokalemia. This means that her potassium level was really low, low enough to cause her heart to beat erratically. 
You see, potassium is used by the body as a signaling molecule. It tells the muscles to contract or to stop contracting. And this is also true for the cardiac muscle. This is something that people with kidney problems should know very well. Both hyperkalemia and hypokalemia are very dangerous conditions that can cause serious heart issues. And this is what's happening to RB. Her heart rhythm is so fast and so erratic that her heart suddenly stops beating. Doctors scramble to resuscitate her. Will they be able to understand what's the cause of our be altered heart rhythm before it's too late? Now it's time to make a step back and see what the supplement she was given actually is. Because right now, the doctors know very well that she was part of an experiment and that she took a supplement. The students tasked with supervising the experiment told the admitting nurse about that almost immediately. What the medical staff doesn't know is that Harvey actually took 100 times the quantity of this very dangerous supplement she was supposed to take. Question, what supplement can cause your heart to stop beating when you take too much of it? Luckily, there are not many supplements that can do that and RB took the most common one. And while RB took that supplement to perform better in sports, this is a substance that many of us actually use every day to, well, perform a little bit better in our daily life. Yes, the dangerous supplement that caused Arby's heart to stop beating and sent her straight to emergency dialysis is actually just caffeine. But don't freak out, everything happened just because she took 100 times the dose of caffeine she was supposed to take. But how could sports science students make a mistake so bad? It's hard to believe that someone could mistake 0.3 grams of something for 30 grams of the same thing. It becomes easier, however, when you see what 0.3 grams of caffeine look like. This you see here. It's more caffeine than what you can get from a cup of coffee. And while Arby took a potentially fatal dose, 30 grams, 100 times this dose, we shouldn't underestimate the dangers linked to regular caffeine consumption either. Because you see, many regular coffee drinkers every day drink way more coffee than they should. And this can cause damage to their heart and kidneys. Question, is coffee safe for the kidneys? We should understand that caffeine either from coffee or from supplements comes with some benefits but also some dangers even when taken in a safe manner. You see, caffeine increases activity in your brain and nervous system. It also increases the circulation of chemicals such as cortisol and adrenaline in the body. This is why in small doses, caffeine can make you feel refreshed and focused. But caffeine may also temporarily increase your blood pressure. It's also linked to anxiety, irritability, and it's an enemy of good sleep. So it's clear that while caffeine has some health benefits, it also comes with certain dangers that we should be aware of. Now guys, I really don't want to, you know, demonize coffee today because it's clear that all of our big problems were caused by the extremely high amount of caffeine she took. And that amount can only be taken from caffeine supplements. And yes, it probably would be a lot better to limit or completely avoid the use of these supplements. But caffeine and coffee may also be good for you. Is coffee healthy for the kidneys? There has been a long-standing controversy regarding coffee safety on blood pressure, heart health, and consequently on kidney health. Coffee is one of the most widely consumed beverages in the world, so today scientists have tons of data on it. In particular, a recent review of 34 studies on people with high blood pressure, heart problems, and diabetes found out that drinking coffee in moderation is not just safe for people with high blood pressure or diabetes, it is even beneficial. But obviously, moderation is key here. This is because coffee is rich in nitric oxide, which is known to help relax blood vessels. And it is also very rich in antioxidants. In fact, Coffee shows more antioxidant activity than green tea and cocoa, two antioxidant superstars. Actually, researchers believe that people get way more antioxidants from these three beverages than from any other food. Coffee is also known to help lowering insulin resistance, help lose weight, and improve energy levels. So don't be afraid of that cup of coffee. Just remember that all these benefits are only going to happen when you keep your consumption below the safe limit of three to four cups of coffee per day. Caffeine 
is dangerous for the heart when consumed in too large amounts, even amounts that are orders of magnitude smaller than what RB took. And I also want to add that the sooner in the day you stop drinking coffee, the better. You know, caffeine is known to decrease sleep quality and duration, which in turn may affect kidney health negatively. So you really want all that caffeine to be out of your body already when you go to bed. And more relevantly to our real story for today, caffeine also comes with a risk of overdose when taken from supplements. And a dose of caffeine around 18 grams may actually be fatal. But 18 grams is just about half of what RB took. While deaths due to caffeine overdose are rare, they can happen. Earlier this year, a very sad report appeared on the newspaper. A 29-year-old personal trainer from Colville, Wales died from the same mistake that sent RB to the emergency room. The father of two miscalculated the amount of powder he was meant to use for his workout. After consuming the caffeine, he began clutching his chest and complaining his heart was beating too fast. Paramedics tried to resuscitate him for 45 minutes, but he was later pronounced dead. A post-mortem examination tells us that the 29-year-old man had caffeine levels of 392 milligrams per liter of blood, which is 100 times higher than what someone who drank a regular cup of coffee would have. And what about half of the level of caffeine in blood that Arby, our protagonist, had when she was admitted to the emergency room? So, do you want to know how it ends? Did she make it? Students tasked with supervising Arby experiment will later tell the judge. The university was also accused of letting an inexperienced staff handled an experiment that proved to be very dangerous. They admitted to the court that the calculation had been done on a mobile phone with the decimal point in the wrong place. And the university was later found guilty and it was fined $500,000. Let's go back to the emergency room now. The doctors are examining RB symptoms and levels to determine what happened to her. And as soon as the doctors were sure enough that the only thing that could have caused all of RB problems was the caffeine from the experiment, she was put on emergency dialysis. But will dialysis be able to clear all that extra caffeine from her blood before it causes too much damage? In the trial that followed RB accident, the prosecutor told the court that the overdose could easily have been fatal. And the judge concluded that the university knew that excess caffeine could have been fatal and the fact the victim was in good physical shape was likely a factor in her recovery. Because RB did actually make a full physical recovery. She was eventually able to make it back home safely, a bit suffering from a short-term memory loss. Okay guys, I am genuinely happy that it ended up well for her. Caffeine is very dangerous and things could have been different if the medical staff at the hospital didn't act quickly enough or if RB wasn't so young and if her heart wasn't in a really good shape as it was. And guys, if you like this story from the emergency room, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more. I upload a new video every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. And you can also watch another story like this one tapping this video up here. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.